guys we are going to begin with our inorganic chemistry and in this inorganic chemistry we are going to focus on the chapter one of it very very lovely now follow me let's go together we're going to be looking at something nice and it is called your general introduction to chemistry so we are going to be learning under your general introduction to chemistry we're going to be looking at five lovely and awesome uh, topics under this the first is called your history and definition of chemistry the second topic we're going to look at is the nature of chemistry and then we'll move quickly into what is called how chemistry affects our world which is the third the fourth very fast is the scientific method what are the various scientific methods we have in chemistry and then number five is called something sweet mm. guess what it is and this is all about matter and its properties so these are the five topics we're going to be learning under this chapter so let's begin with the first history and definition of chemistry so under our history and the definition of chemistry what is expected of us to note now get settled get seated get relaxed go and grab a juice as we roll together under this now what must we know about the history and the definition of chemistry take note of this that chemistry first is a dynamic and evolving field in other words chemistry is not static chemistry is not moribund it is not fixed no chemistry is dynamic things are changing every day and it is evolving and it encompasses the study of matter so the first thing we'll be learning there is your matter the second thing are the properties number three is the composition and number four is the transformation of matter so all of these things are the things that make up chemistry we are looking at matter the properties the composition and the transformation of it the next very fast is that you must know that all of these put together they seek to understand the fundamental principles that govern the behavior of substances and how they interact with each other okay now this hydrogen must react with oxygen to produce your water what's that interaction phase like all of these things are the things that we're going to be learning under your chemistry now let's go deep into first the history of chemistry before we go to the definition of chemistry under the history of chemistry there are four lovely histories we are going to be drawing out and the first is called historical perspective another name for your historical perspective is also called your qualitative aspect or the qualitative history of chemistry now sir what do we refer to this follow me the roots of modern chemistry we can trace it back to the 17th century we are your solid guys like up uh, the first of them is your evangelist Tori Selly. Another scientist we have there is your please Pascal. And then we have the likes of Otto von Wernick. And then we have this guy here called your Robert Boyce. All these guys put together, these were the scientists of the 17th century. They were making remarkable contribution during their time. These guys, tight guys during their time, they started conducting experiments on gases under pressure and vacuum two things they were looking at gases that are under the first thing there is called your pressure number one number two is called your vacuum so the study of gases under pressure and vacuum has a special name and that is called your pneumatics so the era of pneumatic chemistry was pioneered by evangelista Torricelli, your bliss pascal your Otto von Werich, and your Robert boys they even went further yes guess what they this their early investigation in other words the study they have done under your pressure and your vacuum led the underground work for subsequent development in the field of chemistry these guys were so good during their time so they were the first guys in of the 17th century that were that were opening our eyes to the world of chemistry after them we now went for that to look at another perspective and this is what we call your quantitative basis don't forget that we said that the historical perspective is also called your qualitative basis so the second guys are the ones that champion what is called your quantitative basis and guess what the significant progress in chemistry was made in 18th century so 18th century chemists they include the likes of your uh, scientists like your carl william Schilling, 
another guy was your Eric Cavendish. Of course, you know your Eric Cavendish, you have heard of it very well. Another guy that we had here was your Joseph Priestley, and we had the likes of your Anton Lavoisa. So these guys were the 18th century scientists of their time, and where did they focus their days on? Believe me, they established a quantitative basis for chemical changes especially those that have to do with the reactions of your oxygen and you know anytime oxygen burns or the burning of oxygen is called combustion so guys like your carl william shield your Eric cavendish your joseph priestley your anton lavoisa these were the guys of the 18th century and this marked the transition from quantitative analysis down to your qualitative analysis in other words they were the one that moved on from historic perspective into what is called your quantitative basis of chemistry then after them we now went to the top guys and these guys here brought out what is called your atomic and molecular insights so what is your atomic and molecular insight all about now building 19th century saw for that advancement with the great works of scientists like your John Dalton, we're seeing guys your Amedo Afogadro, we're seeing the likes of your John Jacob Bezilius, as well as the likes of your Stanislao Camisaro. So, all these four guys were the major scientists of the 19th century. Of course, you know John Dalton, very popular guy, Amedo Afogadro, Afogadro Snow. Then you know the likes of your John Jacob Bezilius, Bezilius, we're all looking at him very, very well, and your, your Camisaro. All these guys were the 19th century scientists of their time and what did they delve into they delved into the study of atom they looked at atom sat down molecules and they developed rational systems for atomic and molecular weight so they were the one that paved way for your atom it was also in this period that we saw a tremendous increase in the concepts like your periodic table your stereochemistry etc they were pioneered by these four guys now the next concept i'm going to look into very quickly is called your radioactive and atomic understanding now under the radioactive and atomic understanding of course the discovery of radioactivity by Henry Bequery in what year 1896 don't forget Henry Bequery in what year everybody 1896 this guy ushered in a new era in chemistry and you can see the guy here this is your Henry Bequery lovely guy I, 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 I was with him that period when the guy was doing the study in 1896 then when the guy was trying to to look into the guy is very very intelligent now follow me the thing you the thing you must know about this very quickly is this it led to a redefined understanding of atomic structure and chemical processes so big query just opened us up into another era of chemistry and what happened is this that his knowledge revolutionized the field and paved the way for modern atomic theory so who ushered us into modern atomic theory it was the works of your Henry Bequery and after that we now started seeing the likes of Pierre and Mercure and so on and so forth get seated get relaxed this is just the beginning we're going to be looking into a whole lot of things under this enjoy yourself peace out